My name is Michael Motion, uh, and I live here in beautiful Cornwall, Connecticut. Uh, and I'm a juggler, uh, at least that's what people call me. I just finished performing in Kansas, and a, like a little girl came up to me and asked me, how did you start? And people, after they see me perform, think that this is a very important answer, and it wasn't. It started out of total boredom in a summer day when I was about 12 or 13 years old. And I started with my best friend and my uh, brother. None of us really wanted to be jugglers so much, we just wanted to do something interesting and hard. And, uh, and it was, certainly was that. Uh, I was involved in the beginning of the Big Apple Circus. I was juggling in the show, doing some acrobatics, and eventually the third year I was ringmaster. Uh, it was a great experience, because I previous to that I had been performing on the street, and I had had wonderful experiences in New York, street performing, but also in Montreal during the Olympics in 1976. Street performing in New York is, uh, is it's a lot different now because of safety concerns, uh, but I would perform fire on the street and unicycle and do stuff in front of the, uh, in Central Park, but also in front of the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, and it was fun. I was fortunate enough to be asked and, and created a piece for great performances on PBS uh, about my work. And what we did was we filmed in front of the Metropolitan Museum because that's where I used to perform and also me walking around the streets in New York. And in fact, we almost got arrested shooting that for PBS. You can't shoot at the mat, but we had to get the, the shot of me climbing the steps, rolling the balls off my head. And just as I was getting to the top, they were getting ready to arrest me. So it was a lot of fun. The triangle had its inception uh, in a lot of different ways. I was doing physical studies of wedges and, and other things and how the forces moved on each other. And then I stood them up very small wedges and stood them up and then glued them together and then eventually put a ball in there and just tipped the, tipped the triangle and it, the ball went bum bum and I knew right away I said oh and that is the kind of thing that you live for so the triangle piece it, it went on and on and on and I, I developed it in a small scale and then bigger and bigger until the size you see now um, and it sort of took on a sense of percussion and a sense of going after physical skill in a rhythmic way, which is cool. For me, it's a lot of fun. What's interesting and challenging about doing the five balls is that if you see it in the triangle, my hands are here. But with doing five balls, I, it took me a long time to understand when developing it, that I had to keep my hands high. That's the pattern for five. And that's really cool. And it's scary, but, you know, because normally when you throw something to somebody, they actually protect their face. And this, with the five balls, that's literally what I feel like I'm doing. Making new work is different than making new than learning new skills. And unfortunately, part of the problem for me is that I'm not satisfied with just doing stuff that already exists. I like to start from scratch. I think I've got an addiction to that sense of journey, which starts with how you initially admit you don't know how to do something. And then what do you do? That's a great feeling, you know, starting out on that journey. To show you with, uh, with one ball, the original technique that I worked with was instead of grabbing, like you saw the technique in the triangle, uh, working with an open hand. And letting the sense of touch be as important as anything else with the communication of what's going on. And then I had seen a, a wonderful juggler named Don Reed, and I'd seen tennis players work with balls in their hands this way. So I decided to try to learn it. Um, and I decided, well, okay, there's still room in my hand. So I wanted to see what, the, what could be done with this. Eventually, I figured out how to move the balls. A, a while later, my daughter was, uh, my wife was nursing our daughter uh, a couple of months later. And I was watching in a mirror. And I could see, it, it just was beautiful. And all of a sudden, a totally unexpected thing happened. Normally, I would have been only working with the balls this way. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, just from that image, seeing them, this happened. 
And I realized that that was a perfect metaphor for what a child is in a marriage. It has that third dimension and weaves back and forth. It's real happy. Then I, the ego kicks in as well and I realize that I still have more to do because there was still room in my hand. So, I took the ball. And I did that for a long time, just looking at it. And finally. And then eventually. So, the evolution of a technique. So that's about three or four years. Um, I'm doing something that I've never done before, which is I'm identifying a period of time in history where something should have been made and it wasn't. And I'm gonna make what should have been made then. It's a crazy way to think. It's really crazy. I love it. I've been working on this stuff for the last couple of years and I'm real happy with it. What is it? Uh, I can't really tell you about it, because I'm going to protect this. This is the first time in my life I'm actually going to do something A to Z and actually protect myself. I've never, with my work before, ever tried to. Uh, my work's been copied, as I said, all over the place. Uh, I just went to Argentina, and I did a lecture demonstration at a circus festival, and they were having master classes filled with people learning my work from teachers that I knew nothing about. And so. When will we get to see that? Uh, hopefully next year. Uh, I'm trying to, as soon as we get finished with this interview, I can get back to work on it.